having that Latino background for you shaped your journey or made the journey different, more meaningful on your path to becoming Health and Human Services Secretary? You know, uh, having lived only as a Latino, what I can simply tell you that I, I, I can't say what it does for others, but as an American, what it does is it gives me a chance to really live out this dream that my parents believed in and put their faith in when they, you know, put their roots here in uh, Sacramento, California. And I got to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that they decided to do that. I'm thrilled that now I get to help others live out that American dream. And, and from my perspective, it's been a great opportunity to to really live out what a democracy gives you, and that's a chance to pursue a dream in ways that you never expected. I'm, I'm, I think I've got a better job than Captain Kirk did in uh, in Star Trek. I get to go more places than he had, to, you know, where they say, go to no place where no man or woman has gone before. Well, I think I'm getting to do that. And now I want to talk about role models, uh, because that, that that's something that you serve as now, just being in that kind of position that you're in now. but. My question for you is, how is the meaning of what it means to be a Latino role model? What does it mean to be a Latino role model in the modern day compared to how it was maybe when you were young? Uh, let's, uh, I'll tell you how I hope it's the same. I hope, uh, like my role models, my mother and my father, that I work hard, that I, I don't take for granted what I have. My father used to say, if I get up in the morning and go to work, it's a good day. Uh, I have many good days. Uh, I hope that I can continue to believe that I don't need a whole lot to have, have it be a good day. Uh, that type of humility, that type of work ethic, I, I hope never leaves me. Uh, the things that perhaps are different, uh, I, I get to see and do things that uh, a guy who didn't go past the sixth grade, a woman who didn't come here till she was 18 from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, uh, probably ha didn't see in their in their uh, horizon and so hopefully because I get to see a little bit farther down the horizon what I understand is that there are a whole bunch of folks who would love to be able to have the sight that I do and there's no reason why my mother or my father couldn't have had a chance to go to college and use their capabilities in even greater ways and so hopefully I can help others get to do more but still remember to have that ethic that humility that un makes you understand that you're bringing people along to be successful. I've talked, I've spoken to so many first generation students and a lot of them tend to be Latino uh, with very similar backgrounds to what you and I tend to have. M my question for you is actually, I, I was reading your biography not too long ago and I don't know if you recall this, but there was a mention in there about your application to Stanford and how you ended up applying. Can, can you kind of bring me up to speed on that story? Yeah, and but I first have to give that admonition. You always say, do not try this at home because this is not the way to apply to college. Uh, I essentially applied to one college uh, when I was growing up, and I applied to that college, UC Davis, because I had gone to a summer program when I was, I think, a sophomore, uh, where I was told, you know, they saw some promise in me, and I got to go to one of these summer camps at Davis, and they said, yeah, hey, keep up your grades, and chances are you can go to this university when you when you graduate from high school so I applied to UC Davis fully expecting okay if I get if I can get there I'll get there uh, it just happened that a friend of mine uh, was about to discard an application I didn't know what it was I asked him what he was about to throw away in the waste bin and I said oh don't don't throw it away give it to me I filled it out sent it in uh, it was to Stanford University I didn't know where Stanford was two hours from Sacramento but I still didn't know where it was I got in, didn't know where it was until the day I drove there, looked on the map. My mother and I got in the car, and my first day enrolling at Stanford, uh, I got to drive into the campus of a great university. And for the final question here, I want to talk about in light of this being such a big year for Latinos with uh, Senator Padilla, California's first Latino senator, yourself, uh, Health and Human Services Secretary, uh, even some other roles being filled for the first time by Latinos. A big year for Latinos in 2021, given that it is Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, what's your response to just seeing Latinos in these positions for the first time? Let's celebrate, let's be proud, but let's recognize that it's, it is a little disheartening that it's the first, in a, especially for a state where there are so many of us, but it's the first. 
and that's the beginning. The, the door has been cracked open. Uh, somebody's going to try to hold it there so others have an opportunity. It's as I said, I, I'm getting to see things that my parents never got to see over that horizon. Uh, Senator Alex Padilla is getting to show people that crest over the horizon and hopefully others will follow. Because reality is at the end of the day, whether you call me Latina, whether you call me American, uh, at the end of the day, I, I'm no different from most other people. I, I have the same kind of dreams that other people have. And what we show people is don't be afraid that that's the first Latino to be U.S. Senator or Secretary of Health and Human Services. He still cares about your health. He still wants your family, even if they're not like you, uh, to have the best possible. At the end of the day, we all have those dreams. And uh, the only thing I would impart on anyone is that as Secretary of Health and Human Services, the one thing I do want to leave with folks that maybe others haven't is uh, this concept I, you know, I keep saying it, ganas. You, I, Eric, you may know what that means, G-A-N-A-S, look it up in Spanish. You're not going to get the full flavor of it. To me, it's gut, grits, and game put together. And I, hopefully that's one thing I bring, whether it's as Secretary of Health and Human Services or as the uh, California Attorney General in the past or as a member of Congress before. I hope what I can say is that one thing I leave is what Javier Becerra learned from his parents, and that's ganas. And any last comments for you? Uh, I celebrate, uh, enjoy and understand what it means to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month in a country that lets us all celebrate because it does give us a chance to dream and look over that horizon.